Right, this is lesson 6.4, the sine law. In grade 10, we learned about three basic trigonometric ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent. All right. These ratios, though, were only useful when there was a right angle triangle. So, uh, what's going to be beneficial about the sine law is that we can use it for non right angle triangles whenever looking for uh, side lengths or angle measures. Now, what I have right here is I have um, a little exercise that we're going to be doing in class. You can even just make a little note that we'll do this in class together. Where we're going to be trying to derive, uh, develop the sine law on our own. Okay? It's kind of complicated, and that's why I thought it would make sense for us to do this uh, in person here. Okay? So if you mosey on to the next page, I've defined what the sine law is. And the sine law says for any triangle ABC, we know that uh, a divided by sine of A is equal to B divided by sine of B is equal to C divided by sine of C, or I also just have the same thing flipped. Okay. And first I'll talk to you about what all these little letters uh, represent. If I just have any old triangle such that we have angle A, B, and C, so the capital letters being the angles, then across from those angles I have the side length, little a, little b, and little c like that. Okay, so first of all, you need to know that the capital letters represent angles, and the small letters, the lowercase letters, represent side lengths. Okay, um, and so you notice that they're opposite of one another. The second thing I want to notice uh, about these two equations is the equation that I have in yellow here. Okay, I want you to use this equation when determining a missing side length. And the one here that I have in blue, come on, you're going to use when you're looking for a missing angle. Okay. So uh, what I've also done here is I've written a little note about how the sine law is going to be used. So we can use uh, the sine law when we're um, looking to determine a missing angle measure. When a full ratio and the opposite uh, side the missing angle measures are given. So the thing I really want to focus on is what the heck do I mean when I say a uh, full ratio? Well, a full ratio means that I have an angle, let's say angle um, angle A right here, and I have its opposite side. That's what I consider a full ratio, okay? So they're opposite to one another. Uh, B and little b is a full ratio, and C and little c is another ratio like so, okay? Uh, in addition, I can use it when I'm uh, trying to determine a missing side length, when a full ratio, once again, uh, is given, and the angle opposite the missing side length are given. So I'm going to take you guys through an example here where uh, we're going to look for a missing uh, side length, and then the next example we'll look for a missing angle measure, so you have a chance to do um, both. What sometimes gives students some difficulties here is, uh, you notice that I don't have the letters A, B, C here. I have G, H, J for this triangle. Okay, So what we're going to we're gonna try to do is determine the length of G, H. Well, students sometimes panic because we don't have those letters A, B, C. Well, you're still really going to do the same thing. So I'm looking for this side, G, H. Notice that you can also call side G, H little j because it's located opposite of big J over there. Okay, So looking for that side length right there. Well. In order to do this, I'm going to use the first of those equations, if you recall. So what I'm going to start out with is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for little j. And opposite of little j, I need to know that angle. In this case, I do. So I'm going to write sine of 44 degrees. Then after I've done that, you always need to set it equal to a full ratio. Well, I notice right here I have what I consider a full ratio. I have an angle and its opposite side length. So I'm going to set it equal to the side length goes on top, and the angle goes in the denominator, sine of 51 degrees. Now from here, it's just a matter of you rearranging to solve for what j is. And keep in mind that j is what this side is that we're looking for. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I have to somehow get rid of the sine of 44 degrees. So I multiply both sides by sine of 44 degrees. On the left-hand side of the equation, you're just left with j. But this essentially just multiplies up top here. You have the sine, sorry, you have 7.8 times the sine of 44 degrees, all divided by the sine of 51 degrees, like so. It's just a matter of you putting this into your calculator and crunching the numbers. I think they asked to it to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. And so we do this. We have j is equal to 
7.0 centimeters. Okay. Now, in this uh, example, they did say that they wanted GH, so you could just also say GH is equal to 7.0. So it's really that easy. Um, the neat thing with this too is you can actually use this for um, right angle triangles. So uh, the sine law is, is beneficial just whenever you have a triangle, okay? Assuming that you have a full ratio and basically one other piece of information. Okay. I would go through uh, one on the next page where we look at looking for a missing angle measure. Example two, using the sine law to determine the measure of an angle. In triangle MNP, determine the measure of angle N to the nearest degree. Well, let's take a look here. We're trying to figure out angle N right here. But notice how we don't have the information of anything across from it. Well, that could be kind of problematic. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? I do have a full ratio, so that's good. Hmm, how am I going to deal with this? Because I do need a full ratio, but I need the side length that's across from the angle that I'm trying to figure out. Well, let's make a little note here. I think we have a plan. We do not have the side length opposite end. But if we can determine angle P, so this angle right up here, we can determine angle N by subtracting angle P and angle M from 180 degrees. Okay, so my plan is let's just find that angle P up there and then we can obviously get angle N. Okay, so some questions, this is an example of one that's maybe a little bit more difficult um, where you're going to have to figure out some other information that leads you to your answer. So in this case, I'm going to use the equation that has the sign on top. The last example we did had the sign on the bottom. So I start out with the information I'm looking for. I would really like to find out angle P. So I have sine of P all over its opposite side length. So that one that's opposite of this is the 10 is equal to the sine of 92 degrees. So now I'm using my full ratio all over its opposite side, which is 11.8. Now from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to rearrange it for the sine of P. In order to do this I have sine of P, basically the 10 is going to just cross multiply like we did before. We have 10 now, the sine of 92 degrees all over 11.8. Okay. Now the last thing that we're going to need to do right here is we will have to go and um, take this and we have to try to get P all by itself. All right. And So I'm getting my graph and calculator going right here. and can do this uh, like the following. All right. Uh, in order to get p by itself, what we're going to have to do right here is we're going to have to get the sine inverse of all of this. So I take p is equal to the sine inverse of all of this information. You're going to have 10, the sine of 92 degrees, all divided by 11.8. So you can do this all in one step. The other way that you can do it is you can go and find out what this decimal is and then take the sine inverse just of that decimal. Either way, you should be able to figure out what this angle p is. All right, let's try to figure out what uh, angle P is here. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, so I'm good to go right here. I will now start out with the sine inverse of 10 sine of 92 degrees, all divided by 11.8, close them brackets off, hit enter, and we get approximately 57.88 degrees. All right, so I'll write angle P is 57.88 degrees. But keep in mind, we weren't even looking for angle P. Uh, the whole idea was that we were going to get angle N. And so the goal was is we would take 180 degrees, subtract the angle that we knew. We knew that angle M was 92 degrees, and then subtract 57.8 degrees. And crunching these numbers into your calculator, when you round to the nearest degree, you should get that angle N is equal to 30. So those are two different examples. They really don't get a whole lot harder than that, folks. Um, there'll be some word ones, which might give you some difficulties, but this should be a relatively straightforward lesson. Uh, remember that uh, when we get into class and we're taking a look at this, I will go through the proof with you, so we still have that to complete.